Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty. Um, as many of you know, I've been in the business since 2006 and seen a lot of market changes, good, bad, and ugly. Uh, and this last market, uh, current market, I should say, that we're having is, we'll just call it maybe good crazy. I get asked a lot of questions uh, about our market. And I just, you know, I answer those questions the best I can. Um, I'm not a fortune teller or anything like that, but I have a pretty good opinion, I would say, and a good feel for what's going on in the market. And so I just wanted to kind of give you guys a, a market update on the pulse of what's going on in our local market here in Southern Indiana. Things are good. Uh, but I wanted to kind of show you some of the data that we look at. Today, I'm gonna to start with MLS dashboard that we use to look for new listings, just to kind of see new listings, sods, pendings, and, and what goes on. So I'm going to go through this and kind of explain it to you. Then I'm going to give you some of my opinion about what's going on in the market. So uh, as you see down here, uh, this is the market watch from our board. And today uh, we're going to go with the seven days down here. You see, I've got seven. In the last seven days, this is what's happened. So new listings, that is new product coming to the market uh, new homes, properties to sell. In the last seven days, we've had 73 new listings. Uh, that's up a little bit from what we were seeing months ago, starting to see a little more inventory come in. Uh, the next column here is back on the market. This could be where a home uh, had an accepted offer, financing could have fell out, maybe there was inspections done and the buyers kind of got code feed after seeing maybe some repairs that would need to be made. There's several reasons that could be, but so we had 73 new listings come and then 18 come back on the market in the last seven days. So that adds to that inventory that everybody's talking about. One of the things that I haven't seen in a while is price reductions, price decreases, and there's been 46 of those in the um, last seven days. Uh, the next column would be price increases. So a lot of this could be new construction. Somebody's, you know, decided to add some more features. They've had to raise the price. Uh, it's new construction. Maybe materials have went up. They've had to increase the price from when they started. There's several reasons that could happen. But of the active listings that we have out there, which is right around 400 right now, which is about a month of active inventory, uh, we've had 24 of them increase. So the interesting thing is, um, one of the interesting things is the pending. So pending is an, a, a live listing that's went on the market and got an accepted offer in the last seven days. We've had 150 in our local market go pending. Um, and then the next column is SODs. SODs are actually deals that were accepted offers that have closed. So in the last seven days, we've had 121 actually close. So that's definitely inventory that's came off the market. It's closed. It may be flips. It may be, you know, uh, multifamily. It, it, there's anything it could be, but that the deal actually closed. Some of this may be, you know, homes that are going to fix up and come back as a new listing. Uh, one thing that we, we, we're not seeing any leases, no data on that right now. Uh, expires. Uh, we haven't seen much of that lately because the market's so strong. The homes are selling before they... Uh, go through an expiration of the listing. Typically, a listing is uh, listed for six months to a year. And so after six months of the Hatton or a year, whatever the contract term is, that listing shall expire and the seller can put it back on the market with their agent or, or make, go in a different direction. So we've had 10 expire. I would say most of those 10 will come back to the market. Um, We've, the next column is complete releases. That's where people said, hey, I, I've decided not to sell or I want to go in a different direction. I want to take my house off the market. So they've been released. There was only 11 of them. And the last column is, is desire not to sell. There's only been seven of them in the last seven days. And that's just a situation where a seller's decided they don't want to sell their property uh, for whatever reason. So what do we get from this? What what is this telling me as a local Southern Indiana realtor that's been doing you know, business since 2006? Um, you know, we've all heard that there's low inventory, there's low inventory, it's a great time to sell. And yeah, the inventory, you know, you look at that and it, it seems low, um, but what I'm seeing is there's still more homes coming to the market than there were this time last year. 
but they're selling quicker. So they're, they're not hanging around a, a long time. They're, they're on the market, they're getting a great offer and they're going back into this pending status. So it's, it's more about the homes are moving quicker uh, rather than there's just not any homes. The, the homes are out there, they're coming, they're going. So I know in a lot of the sellers' minds, they're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm afraid to, to list my house because there's nothing to buy. Well, every seven days we're seeing around 70 new listings come on. Uh, we got a lot going back on the market. Um, we're even seeing price reductions. So what, you know, what does this tell me? There's a few things that would play into this right now. One of the things that I've seen is the buyers, some of them have said, you know what, I'm, I've, I've bid on several houses. I haven't won. Uh, maybe I want to go get my, save some money, go from like a FHA three and a half percent down to get into maybe a, a, I'm going to wait a little while and get into a conventional situation where I can put more money down. My offer is more attractive. So those buyers have kind of pulled back a little bit and they're on the sidelines getting their stuff together. Another factor that I'm seeing is vacations. Right now we're at a point where, you know, everybody has been cooped up in their homes. Um, a lot of people are being vaccinated. Uh, the, the travel restrictions are lifting and people are going, you know what, it's time for a vacation. Uh, I'm ready to go. So they're out of the buying market right now. They're going to go on vac vacation, have some fun, blow off some stress and come back and get in the market. So that kind of impacts our sellers a little bit because we were just, you know, at the point where it just multiple offer, multiple offer, multiple offer, they're gone real quick. That's still happening. It, it hasn't, the market hasn't died off by no means. But what I'm seeing um, throughout our market with these price reductions and just the homes we're selling, the homes we're making offers on, the, the competition may be at rest right now. If you're a buyer it, and you're not on vacation, it may be a good time to really dig deep and try to make some offers on some homes because your competition's on vacation and some of your competition may be regrouping and getting yourself in a better financial situation to be able to make stronger offers. So uh, buyers, it, it's a good time. I'm seeing a little bit of ease, nothing major, no big spikes up or down. Uh, our market is still very strong, very solid. Uh, if you're a seller, you're in a seller's market still. Uh, I just see just, you know, we were going up at such a pace with these, uh, you know, I think we're at 17% increase on price for the state. I was in a board meeting this morning and, and they were talking about it up north in Fort Wayne and all around our state that they're seeing a little bit of ease. Uh, our board president said, you know, I had three listings go live. Uh, they all sold, but the funny thing was, is I didn't have multiple offers on any of them. And one of them went for a little under asking. So that's kind of a sign where the competition and the market's going. I do not feel it, that we're at the very top, but I feel like we're reaching the top for the sellers. And I think we're going to roll into in the next six months more of a healthy and more stable market. There's still going to be, you know, bidding wars in some areas where a house is just priced so good and it's a great area. You're going to get those those multiple uh, offers. But I feel like there is some hope for the buyers to, to have less competition here in the next month or so while people are on vacation and, and others have kind of backed up. Um, for the sellers, you know, you're in a great position. There's still, you know, more buyers than there are sellers right now. You're still going to get a great price on your house. You might get over asking still. It, it's happening daily. Uh, really, it's the it's the property, the location, and the price that it was listed at that, that determines that. Um, so some other things that I've been asked here lately, I had an investor, a fairly large investor, asked me yesterday, and I've heard this from several people, is when's all the foreclosures going to hit, you know, from COVID? And I've, I've asked around, I've talked to our local banks and they don't have anything on their, on their, on their sheets. They're literally trying to find stuff to do uh, because they don't have a lot of foreclosures or hardly any on the books. Uh, I've talked to one of the vice presidents of Bank of America at a meeting about, you know, when this thing turns, what are you all going to do? You know, we all experienced 2008 and, and uh, the downturn there and the recession. And we all know that it's not going to be like that. The banks have done a really good job of, you know, if you've applied for a loan here lately, you know that they, they're checking everything, like to the last minute, right before we're closed, they're still checking stuff. And these are solid buyers that have bought these houses and they're at great interest rates. And what the, the VP at Bank of America told me, he's like, you know, we learned a lot from last time. We, 
we, uh, we're not going to do it if, if there is a downturn. We're not going to do like we did last time and just go in and jerk, jerk these homes away from people. Then we've got all these inventories of these homes that are sitting there. You know, there's no air conditioning or heat in there. Nobody's living in them. They're, they're, the condition's going down. So the banks, I believe, if there is a surge in this from COVID or these modifications that were done, the banks are going to work with these people. The banks also know that they can get top value out of these houses. They don't necessarily have to foreclose on them. They can work with the seller a little bit to get the home sold because obviously they're bringing good money. And if somebody's living in the home, it's being taken care of. It's a better way of doing this. So I personally, I'm, you know, I'm a realtor in Southern Indiana. I personally don't see a big wave of foreclosures. I know a lot of people are kind of holding out for that. I mean, I'm an investor. I buy properties too, but you know, I'm looking, I'm, turning up rocks. I'm talking to asset managers and they're just not there right now. So I don't feel like that we're gonna wanna see what we did back in our way, just because the banks, I think, learned a huge lesson and there's programs out there and there's money to help people kind of get through their issues. Now I am dealing with one right now that went through a modification because of COVID and there's no foreclosure notices or anything like that going on. We're actually getting the house listed and selling it. So again, everybody gets taken care of at that point. The bank gets paid, the seller gets out from underneath that loan. And a lot of times they walk with some money in their pocket. Uh, we're back in 08, the banks come in, they took them, they put a judgment on, they run through sheriff sale and they sit there forever waiting for the bank to get them put back on the market. They were bad shape and everybody was, you know, buying these homes really cheap. So, uh, that's, that's one of the questions I get asked a lot as well. Um, so I feel like what we're going to see over the next six months is maybe a little bit of relaxing on the multiple offers and the competition may be not as steep as it was uh, coming out of the pandemic. Uh, we had a really a, a huge run on our inventory. Uh, with that said, I'm seeing and hearing and I'm getting a lot more phone calls within my office of people getting ready to list. They're feeling more confident about the um, the COVID, we're kind of coming out the backside of it, I feel like, and they're more willing to put their houses on the market. So that's just my two cents. Uh, I'm going to try to do uh, a weekly uh, video for you guys. And what we'll do is look at, you know, seven days. And then, you know, every week we'll kind of look at what it did in the last seven days compared to the previous seven days, right? We'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that. Now, what I want to do is go down and say, okay, what's it look like um, in the last 24 hours? just to kind of give you an idea. So in the last 24 hours, 12 markets, 12 new uh, homes hit the market. Four of them came back, you know, four more came back on the market. So there's 16. And there was three price increases in the last 24 hours, guys. We haven't been seeing that. That look here. So we've had 12 new, four back, that's 16. We, we pinned at 18. So we're only took off two more than we put on in the last 24 hours. So I'm curious to see over the next few weeks when we do these videos, uh, how this trend goes. And then seven actually, or I'm sorry, 10 actually closed uh, in the last 24 hours, two expired in the last 24 hours, and there was four releases. So guys, there is inventory. Um, you've got to be quick. You've got to have a good agent out there shopping and looking for these as soon as they hit the market. Uh, personally, I bought a few houses here in the last month, you know, and uh, some of my investors and friends are like, man, what, aren't you going to wait for these foreclosures? I'm like, well, I don't see them coming. And, you know, things, inflation, uh, it's just taking things up, up, up and away, right? So the cash I've got is getting worth less. Uh, so I'm trying to put my cash into an asset that be worth more, uh, which is, which is housing. It's going up, inflation is going up. I don't think there's any as we print more cash, the inflation is going to keep rising. So it's a good place still to put your money. Um, like I say, I've bought two. Uh, I know how to find these homes, where to look, and I'm able to find them. I can't buy them all, uh, unfortunately, but what we do is we, we, we try to pass that on to our investors and to our clients, then hopefully that helps them build their portfolio and puts them in a better position for their future and their retirement. So just want to take a few minutes today and uh, just chat with you guys about what I'm seeing in the market. And um, I feel like we're, we're coming, uh, we're not out of the woods yet, but we're, we're coming to probably a more healthy, more balanced market in the near future, not in the next two weeks, not in the next two months, but it's coming. Uh, and I don't see a big crash happening. Everybody I'm talking to, all the data I'm seeing, 
is I think the thing's going to turn into more of a healthy market. It'll still be a seller's market. Uh, but if you're thinking about selling, now may be a good time to, you know, we're kind of, we're reaching the top and, you know, your, your competition's coming. There's more sellers coming to the market. So it might be a good time now to get your house on the market. Uh, and as you sell it, there'll be more choices for you in this time uh, to pick your new home. If you're an investor and you're looking to unload homes, it's a great time because we're at the top of the market. You don't have to worry about replacing that home. Maybe you're cashing out and going to retire. Uh, you want to sell your inventory and um, you, you don't have to worry about relocating because you've got a home you live in. So that's a that's a good choice for people that are looking to um, get out possibly before the capital gains change and that sort of thing. So I really feel like it's it's an indicator that we're going to start seeing more and more inventory. And that's a good thing. That'll be a, a more relaxed uh, market, a healthier market where there's not, you know, there's only going to be one buyer that wins that that house. And, you know, there could be 20 walking away, kicking, kicking rocks because they got beat. Uh, and that's unfortunate. But uh, I think, you know, I think the the healing's on the way. I think we're looking into a more healthy market coming in the near future. I hope this was helpful for you. We'll do some more next week. I'm going to try to put these out on Friday for you. And uh, if you've got any questions or any concerns, or if you got something you want to sell or buy, let me know. Be glad to help you. It's Jeremy Ward with Ward Realty Services. You can reach me at 812-987-4048. Or my email is jw at jeremywardteam.com. Feel free to get on our website at wardrealtyservices.com. Uh, myself or any of my team or brokerage agents would love to educate you, help you, do anything we can to serve you. Um, service never stops at Ward Realty, and that's what we're here for. So, guys, I hope this was of some service and value to you. Talk to you soon.